Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA Pod. Great to see you all. I'm joined today by Shannon D. That's me. And Jacques Tavi. He's over there. Ah, just kidding. It's me. There we go. Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> Wait, you can see all That's of them? Super speed. You said you can say, great to see everybody. I can't see Yeah, no, listeners. you can. Yeah, I can. I've can. been doing a lot of visualization exercises, wow. so I can see everybody. You now. should work on other stuff because that's a pretty bad superpower. <laughs> I have a lot of things to work on. Uh, thanks, though, Jake. Um, wow, we're back, back in the Jake we're lair. Back in person. And Thank God. Great. You know, we had to do some remote recording. I broke my ass on yeah. my one wheel. Oh, but my Broke ass is Danny. getting better. What does um, that have to do with doing remote recordings? Oh, well, that's part of why I want to do it. Oh, really? Yeah, because I didn't want to be wanna sitting. walk around on it. When you break your ass, sitting is all of a sudden the enemy. Oh, it's so, so where were you? Were you lying when doing? Well, I, I, I have like a more supportive chair where I'm kind of Jake's like. You nice seem like a standing couch. desk guy. I ch- no, I can't he stand. Tried. Really? Yeah, he yeah, tried. Okay. I, I've been uh, doing a lot of laying on my side. It's very hard to do anything productive laying yeah, on your side. I can imagine. Yeah. Try to write when you're laying on your side. Oh, and then your like shoulder always hurts because you're like kind of propping that's, up that's on your long. elbow and yeah. shoulder. When my ankle was Defcom one fucked oh, up yeah. I, I had to do a lot That's of work right. just on my back with Uh-oh. my ankle up and like you feel very silly on a sales call when you're just like <laughs> you feel you feel kind of like you're gossiping with your bff in yeah. middle school of just like well i'll tell you what prices i can do if you tell me what prices you want <laughs> well wait, were you were leaning no i was like just flat oh, on my right. back like leaning oh, on my, a pillow yeah, like, with my foot up <laughs> yeah. like backwards on the bed oh, yeah, exactly. you know, feet at the headboard <laughs> and then cute. and then ricky and, and we are we told me that raw garden is giving him this price yeah, and yeah. i was like as if uh, wait guys i hope i don't get hurt next it's yeah, me it's, it's my turn, turn. Oh, I, feel like, ankle butt. I feel like you're immune we're to injury. moving our way up the body i don't get injured very often ankle I'm butt clavicle person. oh no no don't, don't say it. don't clavicle. say the clavicle no, clavicle is that what that's called clavicle. Clavicle. I, remember i clavicle. do sort of have that like ongoing injury oh actually you were injured by a one wheel too wow aita pod is under attack yeah and then you're next with the no, don't get on a one wheel. No, well, I was never going to. Okay, I, I said the second I saw the one wheel of like, wheel. y'all have fun with that. I am they did not, good to they go. They build a one wheel good to hold a, go. a tiny Godzilla. They do. Well, no, they do, but it's that bean in Chicago. It's yeah, that. And like, they tried to make one big enough for me and it just well, well, caved in on itself. So they're like, it looks like a bean. Put it in Chicago. <laughs> well, I got a really weird uh, text yesterday. I didn't know I'd ever get this. My, okay. uh, I was texting my little group chat of my friends and they said, welcome to being a woman. How did I get here? Yeah, well, let's hear Get ready it. for this tale of woe. Okay. So um, are there women that hit on me from doing the podcast? No, but there are men. There are men. I've got a couple mm. of Danny Simps. Okay. Um, you know, just two? Just two. Eh, eh, maybe there's been a couple others, but regular <laughs> Simps. Regularly <laughs> feeding me some Simp energy. Uh-huh. And- Hey, they, they've been around for some time, you know? I just get my little simp hits every now and a nice little fire emoji. There are more than two, actually. Now okay, I think nice. about it. But now that I really think about it, I don't think very many women give me fire emojis. I think I'm really bringing the, in the, gay, the gay men. Anyway, <laughs> it, it's fine. I enjoy it. You know, it doesn't. It's it's a good thing. So one of these guys is is very regular and whatever. It's cool. It's, it's no problem. And in fact, yeah. I recently promised him that I would send him a pic, a muscle picture, you know, as I've been going to the gym. So really? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was nice. You, you didn't see that one coming, huh? You got an issue with that? <laughs> no, I'm just like, you, you, you got set up that hard and you're still just like, wow, what a compliment. Here's my muscles. <laughs> Yeah. Kind gentleman. Yeah, a mirror pick or what? Well, I was going to send him a picture, you know, my chest like, or whatever. If it looks good. Some... <laughs> Is that crazy? You won't feed the simps a little bit? Shirtless. Sure, no. I mean, because of shit. I, what? Go I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I don't check the comments. You don't feed the simps? I am not going to send you don't feed like the simps. a topless don't, photo. Well, not to- top, it's not the same thing, Shannon, for you In to be like, topless as me to be topless. But you're trying to get Shannon on the record to say that she'll feed simps, which is a dangerous <laughs> Will, game yeah, for her to play. That's my question. Would you feed a simp a little bit? What, what would it be? I don't know, Shannon. You have more Simpsons like than me. Like a selfie? No. Yeah. I'm I not think, doing I think feed the Sims. She and I will both engage they in polite can... conversation with anybody who reaches out to us. Whatever. Yeah, we like right. chatting with them. I didn't but... actually do it. Maybe, I'm, maybe I was wrong for that. No, you were right. 
I didn't actually. You, do were, it. you think he was right? You don't have to send pictures to people who just ask. No, no, no. You. He was right to not. Do oh yeah, yeah. I haven't no, done it. No, I said Did I would do it. Did you offer it? I yeah, I said I would do it when I felt good enough about my pack. He asked for it though. Yeah, something like that. He's like, show me them mussies, and I was oh, like, okay. you know. You responded so in the most emotionally vulnerable way possible. Like you responded to his <laughs> yeah. to the hitting on with like a line from Titanic. I, I'll feed the Sims. Maybe it's dangerous. <laughs> That's a sticker. Anyway, a couple of days ago, though, <laughs> I had received a notification on Patreon where people pay for the podcast. And it was like very vicious, something about Danny has a personality disorder. And oh. so then I went to click the notification and the it didn't pop. It, nothing showed up. And I was like, oh, maybe someone just got really mad and then deleted and the then comment. Deleted no problem. Whatever. I get it. Who hasn't written an angry thing online? About you specifically. Yeah. Everyone's gotten mad at me. So anyway, then somebody else commented something new the other day that was like, hey, these comments are really harsh. I think you need to calm down. And then I click that one and then I see, oh, no, that comment was there. Oh. And this person, this name I didn't recognize was just ripping me apart, ripping me apart, just taking all kinds of shots at me, you know, uh, saying that one of the one of the funniest things was like, uh, you don't even I bet even not one in 100 people in the world know who Danny Vega is. I was like, that's 70 million. Yeah, yeah that, that'd be not. wild stats. Be an incredibly famous person if one in 100. <laughs> if one in 100 yeah. people knew who you were and you were still doing this podcast, you're, we, you're sure, way off. You I sure as fuck wouldn't be reading this hateful comment about me. <laughs> I would definitely have something better to do. Wait, and they're a, they're a patron? Yes, and that was what was so weird. I was like, God, this person, you know, pays, so they're obviously a supporter. And so then I was like, I got to figure out who this is because I was, I was going to send them a message like, hey, you know, I'm just a little concerned. And you seem to get really angry there. You know, uh, I just wanted to check in. I was going to send a message like that. But then I was like, let me just poke in because I didn't recognize the name, you know, from our discord or from Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then I go in and I realize it was this, this, the guy that you were going to give this your guy muscle. that wow. I was going to give my muscle picture to. Okay. And so I was like, why would he do that? I mean, we have playful banter. He had this picture. I was going to take and it for him eventually. Him. Yes, of course I respond to him. <laughs> I was going to take it He's eventually. a nice, he's a sweet guy. I had no issue with him at all, you know? And so I go in and I just wrote him simply on Instagram. Hey, why are you being mean to me on Patreon? Yeah. Blocked me. Oh. What? And it honestly just kind of made me like, what the, f what the fuck, man? Like, I. I don't know. I felt really weird about it. Strange. And then I texted my friends about this and they said, welcome to being a woman. Mm. Yeah. You were a mussy tease yeah. in his mind. Yeah. I had just said the mussy thing though, like literally like on Saturday. So that was like four days ago. So it wasn't like I had like strung him along or anything like that. I, w I was intended on really doing it, but, and, and those comments were like five or six days old. So I'm not really sure if that was before the mussy thing or not, but Very yeah, I got this feeling of like fear and anxiety and like, cause you know, when someone, blocks you you know i feel like bad i'm like oh my god like what did i do like did i fuck up here yeah and so they like put that bad feeling in me and i recovered after like 20 minutes i was like whatever but yeah, yeah. it was just a, it was an upsetting thing and yeah i guess I, this I happens understand to women a lot that. yeah just the fear in general <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! The yeah, no, I, I think Shannon's <laughs> touching on the real thing there. Like, she looked right you, through my soul and was like, "Just the fear in general." See, like you still, you still don't have to worry about the fear. You just have to worry about like, oh, I made somebody upset because I wouldn't give them sexual gratification. No, I did, but that's the thing. I was like, I don't even understand why because yeah, you were why they to. why they did it, and like, I'm still forgiving. The door is still open. I'm just like, why were you, why were you mean to me? I mean, look, I've been mean yeah. online to people uh, in my yeah. past. You yeah. know, like. You know, I, I've gotten better in the last year, but no, I'm just kidding. But when I was a teenager, I would, you know, talk shit and leave angry, hateful comments. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, it's like a mix of jealousy and security, wanting to shoot someone down. But yeah. I'm like, damn, you personally engaged with me and did that? So I'm like really yeah, confused. It is confusing. You well, know. if you're listening, if you're a listener, sounds like you were. Yeah. And pro. And, um, uh, what's going on? Yeah. Pro doors tip. still open for you. If man. you are listening, pro tip, once you leave multiple comments, you lost. Like, it's very clear you're the one who's too invested in this. You get one comment max, and then after that, you're you're just devaluing your stock what from there do you on mean? out. If yeah. you keep leaving oh. mad comments after oh, mad getting ones. passively rejected, basically, which is essentially 
What happened? I mean, you were still willing to send the mussy pic. Well, he was going to. He was planning on it once he I felt like on once it. he was You guys himself. are making me feel slut shamed over here. I thought I was allowed to send off the mussy. You are. You I work are. on these bad boys. You are. They want to go out. Women okay. don't care. There's a really funny gym meme of like <laughs> you like you picture yourself surrounded by hot women and then it's all these gym bros like yeah. hell yeah dog. The most yeah. the most common compliment I've ever gotten on my body is from men and it's just gym guys going your calves are fucking sick dude. Oh, How are yeah. you getting that? You and uh, he just flexes his calf. Yeah, I did. Uh, but it's, it's <laughs> honestly, God, it's just walking. That's the only that's yeah. the reason I have nice calves. I barely work them out at the gym. Mm, yeah, that's good to know. I actually have, I didn't a, I have know pretty that good calves as well. Like... It's one of my good muscles. Max has good calves too, actually. Tall guys usually got the good calves. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You got a lot of buoyancy or something. Anyway, enough about sure. my bullshit. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, this is This is great, Shannon. You've got a big update for us. Oh, I sure Ooh. do. So I think I had mentioned this months ago, but my dad was on The Price is Right. And the episode finally came out this Monday. Wow. And it was so much fun. So he's been watching since the 70s. Oh he would God. record it on VHS, record a DVR. He watches it every day now that he's retired. And it's just been a lifelong dream of his. So he auditioned, both my mom and him auditioned in the beginning of the year. And it was like a Zoom audition. Yeah. The cutest, funniest audition ever. I'll have to post like a part of the tape on our Instagram. Oh, I want to see. It's really cute. I literally teared up when I was watching oh. it because they want you to have like a lot of energy. And just watching him doing a self tape, which because like everyone knows actors that's what we do all the time and it was just so like warmed my heart watching him like do what I do all the time it was so cute so he got chosen and then you could bring up to five people so mm -hmm. my mom and I went and so I don't exactly know how it works but I'm assuming if you were the one that auditioned like you're most likely going to be the one that gets called down because yeah. it's different now back in the day it used to just be like you showed up you were an audience member and it was like picked at random mm -hmm. but since covid you're now in like little pods there's not as many people and so um he was the first uh, or he was one of the first four that got called down the first time he guessed the item right which was like this robot grocery thing like you know those ones that you see around oh that's scooting around town yeah, yeah so okay. it's like a personal one all right that, like, carries things. i don't want that in my house i but know all right. my mom kept being like what did we win Weird. i was like a robot grocery <laughs> whatever mm, that me, is give me your shopping list mm, <laughs> give me your prescriptions i will go to the pharmacy mm. <laughs> like what what? I know. So anyway, he he won that and he got up and you can see all this. I posted on my Instagram, but then he he got the one game that he always hates because it's one of the hardest to do. And it was like you had to guess which out of the six items. There was three that were under seven dollars or four that were under seven dollars and two that were above. So you had to guess all the ones that were under seven and he guessed the first three. Right. And then the last one, it was between saf safflower oil, hair gel and cat food. OK. And he went with cat food, but it was hair gel. And yeah. he had the chance of winning thirty three thousand dollars. Oh, Oof. God. In his Such defense, who knows, who knows shit about hair gel? I know. Well, even like I had no idea either. Well, also, we were so far away and they like the cameras are in front of us, so I couldn't really get a good look. But also it was like hair gel can be like 15 bucks. Yeah. And like cat food is fucking expensive now too, apparently. And it was like a three pound bag. Like it wasn't that much, but anyway, and then he spun the wheel and he, 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 he got to spin good the there. wheel though. That's but nice. yeah. And he like shouted out, um, my grandparents who are 95 and 94 years old. And then me and my mom, my dad, and then like all the rest of our family members too. It was really cute. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I, yeah the video of him going up just, it gave me so much secondhand joy. Yeah. I was so excited to you watch him he go loves up. It. That picture oh, yes. you put up of his face just being on stage. I actually went because it reminded me of something. I went and I looked up pictures of athletes being drafted to professional Aww. teams. Your dad looks happier than half of those athletes. <laughs> like they all look happy. Your dad is just like, this is, I've been waiting for this. Oh, I knew so my time would come. Game changer. Yeah, I know that that post got like way more comments and likes that I've gotten on any post recently. And so many people were like, oh my God, why am I tearing up Simple right joy. now? Oh. 
Oh, it really is what just a payoff. The I mean, he's been watching for 50 years, you said, since the yeah. 70s. He so came ready. Amazing. He came ready. He Loved really to see did. It. Although it would have been nice it, if he won, but well, it is a nonsense game. Let's be real. Yeah. Like, Price is Right's great, but it's a nonsense game. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, you know this thing you've never seen before? What's that cost? I know. Yeah, and right. with inflation these days, like my parents oh my have said that the God. prices, because a lot of times that you reuse the same stuff. So you kind of get a feel for how much things are. They were like in the past couple of years, the prices have just been insane. It's hard to guess. Oh, it's horrible. You go to the grocery store now, you spend a hundred bucks. You got like four things. I know. <laughs> it's rough. It's sad. It's real it's rough. It's really gang. shitty. Ah. Oh boy, Jake's, Jake's going crazy. Woo. <laughs> uh, well, we did get some feedback on um, the old person restaurant situation yeah Um, Yeah. i thought this was a good comment to read here uh so just to bring you guys in a little bit basically this was like an old lady who was like i want a chair and they were like ah we're not going to give you a chair because everyone's going to have a chair go sit in your car and we'll come get you Mm -hmm. so neuro tickris wrote on instagram equality is not the same as equity treating everyone the same doesn't take into account the disadvantages that have to be considered would you tell someone on crutches no if they asked for a chair and you know what? Putting my hand up here, your old buddy Tuesday really whiffed on this one, gang. I got too yeah. hot. And you know what? The second I said the word equality, it was a one of those like, hey, I've been working on this. I'm I'm privileged city over here. I've grown up with nothing but it. And I've been trying to remember that difference between equality and equity. And I'm glad somebody called me out on this. And I got to own up. You know, this is a personal bias that I have. And I'm not saying it's OK, but I'm realizing like, shit, I do have a bias against older, Codgers. mainly older men, um, because most of the older men. I grew up around, not all of them, but most of them. It was where I saw most of the racism, most of the intolerance, most of the stuff that was really informative of who I didn't want to be. And I have carried over that into a straight up bias and I have to work on that. And this, this brought out uh, an unexamined thing that I'm working on now. Uh, just kind of keeping in mind that like, I've got to be chiller about this kind of thing. Cause I think Shannon was making a lot of great points. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really, it really does come down to that equality versus equity. Um, you know, I, I don't know why I got as hot on that situation as I did. By the time we ate that night, I was just kind of eating. I'm looking back like, I don't really care about that situation. Might I got some anger. Might yeah, have some anger. But I'm, I'm not giving myself <laughs> excuses. Thanks for calling us out in the comments. Keep us accountable, folks. We really appreciate it. I'll be backing off a little bit as well. I, I maybe, um, I basically, in the same uh, episode, there was something about a bakery and to bring you in on this. Basically, this person owned a bakery and their parents died in a fire or whatever. <laughs> I made that part up. I made that part up. Their parents yeah. died and the parents had named the bakery after them. And then the the fucking in-laws. bakery owner employed two of the in-laws and his wife at the bakery, but then mm. the wife was pregnant and the, the in-laws wanted to rename the bakery to suggest that it was a family business. Yeah. And I took this very rigid and frankly off base worker, pro worker standpoint. I viewed this in the wrong terms. I ended up looking up bakeries and uh, bakeries. I don't know if you guys know, bakeries are not the same as multinational corporations. <laughs> this was a incorrect thing for me to assume. Um, I pretty much looked it up and it's like pretty much not worth it to own a bakery unless you really love baking. That's a great re- If you love baking, totally own a bakery. Otherwise, it's an okay business. Or if you I want know. some fucking jacked forearms. You ever see a baker's forearms? Are they jacked? Oh, yeah. get out of They're town. Awesome. Like so hot. So, yeah, reason, size but. size of a fucking just like mm-hmm. kill a caveman with a forearm of a baker. I hear you, small business people. I get it. You know, I'm a small business or something. I have a small business. I'm inadequate. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> was that a good enough? Did I address that well? You, you got there. I got there. I think, so, I, think yeah. I, I think I think I took the wrong lens on it. Obviously, look here. I think what I was what I'm the message I'm trying to send is I think. I, I think that, look, if you own a business, um, I don't think employing people is inherently exploitative or anything like that. But I think it's a healthy thing to view it as a collective, an endeavor that you're working on together. Now, looking back at the situation, I don't think it fit the bill. I think there is good evidence that suggests that, you know, basically these people came in and they were half assing in and they'd been there for two hours and were like, we own the place now, too. Fuck you. That's ridiculous. Well, I don't even know about the half assing part, but at the they very just had, they least, they didn't have the same kind of skin in the game. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I'm talking about. And if you put skin in the game, go ahead, Chad. One thing that we were talking about is like if if in fact they really did want to feel included and that's what it was about, which I don't really think it was. I think it was more a vanity thing. Um, I think it would have been nice if they came up with like a recipe that they could sure. then name after themselves, like have yes. something. And if he was being super rigid on that, like not wanting them to be included in any way, then I could ding him. For sure. But, you know, just wanting to keep the name that your parents gave it, that was such a special thing. Such an easy thing to respect. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a complicated thing, too. I mean, I, I can definitely sing the worker song all day long and say collective this, collective that. But I love I, that song. It's a good song. <laughs> Real catchy. But, uh, but at the same time, you know, when you're working for a work, local business and a small business or even not a small one, too, like, you know, you 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 kind of if you're just showing up and being a disposable employee, then you may get treated that way. And I think it sucks that our society is like that. But if you go the extra mile, I hope that on the business side and the owner side, they will respect that. For instance, I love your suggestion, Shannon. They not say, hey, we want an item name. No, we will make a new item. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are going to take initiative. Right. And I think that, that that's what I'm talking about. Collective. And, and the collective does go both ways. Mm -hmm. A collective means that I am I am going to act like I own this and I'm part of it. And I think that people should be conscious of that. Yeah, yeah. So. It, it actually yeah. reminds me when I was a seasonal employee at Best Buy, I tried to get them to change the name of Best Buy. <laughs> I have no idea if this is real, but yeah, I'm so no, excited. I, I, I like made a big pitch. <laughs> I put up a deck and I was just like, what if we called it Best Stuff? And my managers just were like, Jake, you're not even working today. Where's your shirt? You're not even working today. <laughs> so this is a new segment we're trying. I'm excited about this. It's called From the Headlines. This is a real news story that I've adapted. AITA for turning off the freezer. I-42M am a janitor that works for a contracted cleaning company for a college. The contract is for $1.5 million, but I am paid $12 per hour. Recently, I was doing my rounds and I heard incessant beeping, beep, beep, beep. It was driving me bonkers. I tried to flip the breakers on, which I thought would stop the beeping, but I misread it and actually turned them off. Apparently this caused a freezer to turn off, which ruined 20 year old research valued at over a million dollars. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. AITA. Oh my um, goodness. So, well, go ahead, Shan. <laughs> I just think that we were talking about this earlier, that there needed to be some communication here amongst everyone that's working there about how important it is to not turn off the goddamn breakers. I know there's a sign, but there, there should be yeah. some kind of a meeting that every single person understands how absolutely necessary it is to not touch this button. Just to, to clarify the facts, there was a sign on the freezer itself saying not to turn them off. Right. So but not the breakers. Breaker. Not the breaker. So it's unclear. I don't know if he had seen the sign or if he had not seen the sign. I think it's reasonable to not assume that the million dollar freezer isn't connected to the random breaker I that's just totally in the building. That. No, you need to you need to tell every single person that enters the building. If you're not gonna have some sort of backup, which you should, if this is millions of dollars in 20 years, you should have some sort of thing where it's not just one little button is gonna fuck up all of your research. But if you're not gonna do that, then you need to have some goddamn safety meetings. I honestly think that the way they have spun this is criminal. The yeah. reality is that you know what this really is? We ruined our own research by not planning properly. Yes. You put a million dollars of research on a single breaker and it was a one little printed out sign that protected that. I'm sorry, but that's on you, sweetheart. Yeah. 20 if years. You leave a million dollar diamond necklace out in the open, like you're yeah. playing with fire. You are. Reality is real. This freezer should have a birthday. Like they should have like a, <laughs> they should get this freezer a cake every year. So everybody remembers, don't fuck with the million dollar freezer. Yeah. You don't have a Millions backup of too. any kind this of generator or battery. This is are for in a, at a university. You got to have an yeah. intern or somebody well, that's. Some of, yeah, watching it the entire time. Uh, I don't know how science works, but so there's got to be a solution. So are people like coming at this guy about it? If you read the comments. Man, some people are and you know it's it's completely ridiculous it's such a like it's just such misplaced anger and i'm like if you're a serious research facility like 
I don't know. I don't know exactly how this works, but I know you can buy a, a UPS backup on a fucking an un- uninterruptible power supply on Amazon for a hundred dollars. Yeah, like can, y'all didn't think of that. Get one of those little strippy post-it notes and just write not this one on the breaker. Yeah. I mean, I think you should take a little bit more formal steps. If we're talking about a million dollars of science, Agreed, but the fact that they didn't you know, have that step, a lock, a, a little, yes, like a yes. lock, like a- anything, anything, but this, I'm honestly kind of like mad at how the story has been spun. I don't even know just, but just based on what I do know, I don't even know if they have a case against the contracted cleaning company. I was like, I don't, I don't know that the cleaning company assumes liability for turning off your power, which is kind of a normal thing to do. You would turn off the lights, turn off things that are on. That's kind of if people are complaining about it, like the beeping noise. Yeah. We don't know. That's another thing. Have you ever seen how rabid people in an enclosed space get when there's repetitive beeping? Oh yeah. People lose their minds quick we were just at a thing the other weekend where there was a beeping, beeping noise and it immediately it. became a, a dire concern for everyone of we have to fix this beeping now it's, it's driving me insane you know it's annoying and the the janitor like had said like you know that he thought that he was doing the right thing and he was just trying to solve the problem so i think that the idea that this was you know born of complaints um, is very plausible. AITA mm-hmm. for turning off the freezer. I am saying NTA and the research facility is. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Maybe I could ding the cleaning company, but I'm like, no, you guys are the scientists. Put a backup in. Hey, you know I back what? up the fucking podcast. You know, oh, no, my precious episodes. Jake is Wario on that one. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> that, that was that was actually the handyman after after he found out what happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really tough for me to to care about like nobody gives a shit about your shit i'm sorry to say it nobody might have been it might have been 20 shit. years of research yeah. worth millions of dollars but nobody else knows that yeah. you gotta communicate that once a week at yeah least. you gotta put it together oh, mm-hmm. wow all right this is another yeah. new segment we're trying let us know if you like the segments we'd love to hear about it uh this one's called pop culture moment this is another news story but it's got a pop culture taste AITA for throwing my mom's ashes on stage at the pink concert. I 30 something F recently suffered the loss of my mother together. We both loved pink. She didn't ask, but I thought throwing her ashes in a bag on stage at the concert would be a good send off for her. So I went to see pink in the UK and did the deed. I yelled out that they were my mom's ashes and pink noticed them. And this is, this is actually from the video. She said, quote, This is your mom. I don't know how I feel about this. And then resumed singing her song. I guess I'm not really sure what reaction I was expecting from Pink, but it did leave me wondering. AITA. I would actually, I've I've seen the video and I I think that I'll go one step further for how well Pink handled this very strange situation. Mm. She very gingerly and delicately got the ashes off to the side and safely pressed up behind like a speaker or something on the stage. Mm. She made sure nothing was going to happen to them, which is such a step beyond. Like I would have understood if she just immediately cleared herself away from the, (laughs) well, that's what I was wondering is, when you had first told me about this, I thought that the ashes were all over the place, but it was like in a bag. In a bag. It was a little bag. Weird because that's not really scattering your ashes. It's just like, here, woman, have my. Yeah, what, you, what did you want Pink remains. to do with them? Did you want her to go right. into that, like, I'm coming out, so you better get the party started? And then yeah. she just starts whipping uh, around. Yeah, that, like, like it's glitter. Like, I, I feel like that's a pretty rough yes and to put on somebody who doesn't know, one, that it's your mom's ashes and two who you are. I yeah. think that's true. I think it's a ding. It's kind of weird thing to do to pink. I mean, she is a performer and I think that falls outside of the sort of normal things that you're allowed to throw at a celebrity or at a performer, right? Like bra, I think is like borderline, but allowed panties, you know, I guess it uh, depends on the band. Probably. Tomato is mean. That would be mean, right? That's Except for hurt. if you were to throw them at me. Cause I love tomatoes. Is that true? Oh yeah. You are my favorite food. My nickname growing up was the Tomato Queen. What the <laughs> fuck, man? No. What the fuck, dude? I can't today. I just can't. We've. It's such an enigma. You when were a picky eater, stop? but you'll go to town on corn on the cob and tomatoes. Every time yeah. I think and I know who this person we're is. We're never going to nail it down. <laughs> the uh, Tomato Queen was your nickname. Yes. How often did you eat tomatoes? Every day, like apples. No, Shannon! You you raw dog tomatoes. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, Jersey tomatoes are excellent. No. 
just straight up straight yeah like tomatoes. an apple that's so weird like <laughs> the red one not even heirloom so yes. nice ripe yeah heirloom, heirlooms yeah. are a lot i love an heirloom okay heirloom the big fatties the, the ones that are like kind of green they kind of yeah. oh, i love, oh, I love them all every single one wow Plum are not as good Okay. But the grape ones, oh my god! Oh, the little I, ones I, I can, can pop. Yeah, a I can one. chow. I can oh, the grape yeah. tomato yeah. for sure. I want to give credit to Pink again too, because I've always had tremendous respect for her as a performer. She's a fucking hustler. <laughs> Jay no, caught no. us away from that freak show. No, we, we can talk about Shannon's weird vegetable habits <laughs> later. Uh, we're, we're probably not going to get to talk about Pink that much. But much like how we talked about Taylor Swift, she's a fucking gamer. Her concerts oh, are always really her. physical, demanding. Um, and she came up at a time where the music industry was super slanted against anybody that wasn't doing the bubblegum pop thing as a yeah. female standalone yeah. artist. So what? I'm still a rock star. That's pretty good pink. I got the rock move. Okay, she's losing uh, it now. That was good. But, <laughs> um, I was in. But yeah, I've always been a big fan of her. I'll throw um, a tomato at that and shit. I think that she's inspired a fan base that. It's that thing people do where you think you love an artist so much that you have this special bond with them. But in reality, it's like you're consuming their art and that's great, but it doesn't give you any claim. It doesn't give you any familiarity with them. And to throw yeah. a dead body... That's what you did. Dust. You threw it's a body. It's, it's just in dust body, form. Jay. Hey, look, is ice cube <laughs> is ice body. cube water? Is ice cube water? And ice cube is water. Yeah, and is and is water also is water. Well, I guess okay, I guess water yeah, isn't an ice cube. I don't know All what right. You're doing here. I'm wrong. I, I have a lot of respect for her as a performer, and I think that this shows that she's a really considerate person yeah. to not have just immediately backed away and told security to throw you out. Because that's it's, fucking insane. I'll leave you at this. It isn't a body, but it is of a body. And it's, it's There's a little bones in gross. It. Is, there, is there bones in it? There's bones I, in it. If I were her, I, they, I they would cook be. It down. Is it really There's still little chunkies. <laughs> Did you put it in your mouth? Chunkies. What? No, but you can see them. Have you ever seen a like? Have you ever seen I one of your pets don't cremated? Think, no, I don't no, think I have. I haven't have. seen that. There's no. little chippies. I would honestly be kind of flattered if someone were to do this. Oh boy, that somebody this is loved dangerous. You, that somebody loved you that much that they would want that their some of their mom's remains. It's, like, I can see it being flattering. No, flattering. I, I don't think you're wrong. No, no, I, I think that's where you're getting dangerous. I think it's flattering to you. You would find that flattering, but like I, I, I I'm sure she thought that that was flattering. No, I think th I think this is a little violating to throw. I'm not saying it's not violating, okay. but there's a part of it that's like, oh my gosh, that is so amazing that you would want to scatter your mom. Like people want to scatter their family's ashes in very personal places to them, you know, where they grew up, where they would go skiing, where they blah, 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 blah. And the fact that somebody loves, loves you that much, they had a bond about you that they wanted to scatter their mom's ashes at your concert. Like, I think that that uh, is flattering. It just, it just I'm, strikes I'm with me you as obsessive it, and unsettling. Exactly. I see. I, I just, I, I'm not ready to paint with that broad brush here. I'll give you that. You get, find it flattering. You're saying. also very vain. So <laughs> oh, God, Danny, <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Come on. I mean, Shannon, I would like it too, but I think, look, I don't think it is. I think it could be flattering. It could play well. It could play well. I I do think it's a lot of a burden to put on someone. You are throwing people dust at them, and I think it's not an appropriate thing to do at a concert. It's kind of a it's kind of a look at me moment. I think yeah. it's selfish. It How about made, just? It would have made me feel like a prop in a fantasy. That's how it would have made me feel. That's like. a good way to put it. Violating to Pink, I think, to do it without any permission or consent. Like, if she had sent an email and been like, could I do this? And Pink said, Pink was like, <laughs> you were me. How did you get my email? <laughs> well, we would have said, we were so flattered. Please, cover uh, me in your I mom mean, all you got to do, if you just put, you know, Pink at Google, Pink at me.com, yeah. Pink at Apple. You just, yeah, you'll, you'll get it eventually. But I also oh, think it's Google. not fair to the other concert goers. It's like, oh, well, I collect parrots, so I threw my parrot at Pink. <laughs> Like, Guys, no, how dude. about blanket statement? Just don't throw things at don't, performers. Don't throw period. things at people. Okay. Yeah. Or I'm or with anything. don't throw no, things I, I at like people. It's feel like it's kind of fun part of no. It. You well, can't throw. I was just telling you guys that BB like, Rexa, uh, the whole yeah. ass phone got thrown in her face. They had, to, I think they had to end the concert. She had to go to the hospital. Well, that's violent. But I mean, aren't there things you can throw at a concert? I, I think know. it's really guess, just bread at a rocky no bread at ducks bread at a Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think that that's probably. Probably one of the only things you can throw at a show. <laughs> it's fine. Picture Jake, he's so tall. Yeah. He thinks that the, the artists are ducks and he's I, like, eat it. I yeah. love Queens of the Stone Age. Here's some rye. I actually think I can back that. Just don't throw shit at people. It's That's a good a rule. Good rule. It's a pretty good rule. Yeah. Unless you're in a water balloon fight, uh, uh, you know. 
I would say, what do we guys think? YTA or NAH? I know. I think it is a Y. ATA for throwing my mom's ashes on stage at the Ping Oncer. I think YTA. That's it's too pe- much. It's people dust. It's Soft YTA. Even if, no. Even if Pink, <laughs> if they cleared it with Pink and Pink is running with it, fine. Then it's part of her show and that's what the audience played to see. But I think it's it's pretty selfish. You're making the show about you and your mom. Nobody fucking cares. You're violating Pink. I think... <laughs> What are you dancing? She's now? doing the Singing song. The in song in my yeah. Shannon is like living this. She's like, I want to be pink in this moment. Do you think we can get pink on the podcast? No. I love that. My Maybe mom if you die and we her. turn you into dust. <laughs> Don't throw me a pink if I die. Just right at the top of the list. Don't do that. I feel like Jackie would put the kibosh, but I'm putting it on the record. There we go. All right, we're going to do some listener submissions today, guys. Woo-hoo! Please rate, review, subscribe. We're Join us be really on mean. Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. I think we're coming up on 170 episodes. And by the way, if you want to just take a little sample of the Patreon, mm-hmm. hit Shannon or me up. We got that bonus pack right for yeah, you. We got we've 20. Been, we've been giving them out. Love to do it, guys. So just please ask. All right. Our second story of the day. AITA for deciding not to take my son to my in-laws. But first, here's Shannon. AITA for telling where the ants came from. I, 24F, work at an office with about 20 other women. Around half of us have kids, half do not. About one month ago, I was training my replacement as I got moved to a new department within the same office. And I noticed several ants crawling into another employee's purse and on her desk, the floor, and even her keyboard. I didn't want to seem rude, so I informed her, Hey Maggie, I see some ants trying to get into your purse. You might want to move it. So then... She let me know, actually, I have an ant problem at home. They're coming out of my purse. We've been trying to get rid of them. I was speechless and nodded in acknowledgement. Flash forward to last week, we found at least 100 ants in the office kitchen. Oh, no. We had maintenance come by to spray and thought that would be the end of it. Now it is the following Monday. Maggie has ants all in her office and they have spread to the room next to hers along with the kitchen once again. Our boss is exasperated by this situation and I myself am highly sensitive to pesticides. The last time they came and sprayed, I almost had to use my EpiPen due to the reaction I had. Now, here's where I think I may be the asshole. I told my boss in confidence about seeing the ants coming from Maggie's purse and that I'm concerned about how bad the ants are at her (laughs) house due to how many she's brought to work with her. Whoa. Maggie has two children under the age of three. I know that by reporting this to my boss, she may be required to report this to local authorities due to the environment Maggie's kids are living in. I don't want her to lose her kids, but I want her and her family to get the help they need and to keep the ants from taking over the whole office. AITA? Okay, hold on. Let's pump the brakes real quick. I am not sure Child Protective Services can come in and take kids away because there are ants. That's what I I thought. Okay, when I first read this, I thought that was ridiculous, but I actually missed a point, which is I thought that Maggie just brought in ants once. No, no, no. Maggie brought in ants initially... And then again, and is it a third time or is it just two times? Two. Sh- two times. Okay. Still, that's that's like a lot. Because That is a lot of ants. My feeling for the first time was like, okay, maybe she put her purse like where the ant trail is and she kind of like fucked up, you know, and whatever. It's her purse. But like, she really must have a lot of ants for to bring in a hundred. I know, but like... I feel like don't you don't you have like ant problems sometimes and like I feel like it doesn't they mean do. that the area that you live in or your environment that you live in is unsafe. It's just like you have an ant problem. You gotta right handle now. the ants. I did want to Danny. Don't leave have your you had an ant your... problem of oh, this extent? Th- not no, this, this extent. Not, not, hundred would be in your. Purse. Well, hold on. I want to call attention to that. I wish I could have been there for the moment where someone is like, "Well, how many ants is it?" And somebody just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They went through uh, at least a hundred, but also a <laughs> hundred. Ants is not that. That's many not ants. that many ants. Not that it's many ants. It's really few. not that. Many. It's more than. It's more than none. going by what? 
<laughs> like, I don't uh, know what we're comparing this on to. On the Schmidt Ant know. Index scale, <laughs> this is what you would call, uh, this is what you'd call an Iraq, uh, 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 I can't finish that joke. It's, it's a I healthy, yeah, I, it's I, a I, healthy I, amount of ants. Um, here's where I'm going to, I am going to say this, and this is, I think, kind of giving away where I'm standing on the situation. If you replace ants with the word lice, no, you're not the asshole because you have to report where the lice are coming from That's in order true, yeah. to stop the problem. Yeah. And the reason yeah. why it's funny is because it's ants and ants are just funny. They're just these little fucking guys and they're just yeah. crawling around. It's like, oh, we got our big hole down there and we got, by the way, everybody, I don't know if you know this, ants own the world. Ants outnumber There's us in terms of bio, biomass. Biomass ants run this shit anything, right? if the it's ants crazy. decided to come for us it's over they could take us yeah it's done the bullet ants alone oh, y'all, y'all know about no, bullet ants? I, i'm picturing these as like sugar ants right like the no little it has to buggers. be if these were bullet ants everybody at this office would be Ooh, dead oh no we've got a comment here here we go nta when in doubt report if it's to the point where cps decides to get involved then they need to be involved if it's nothing they'll clear it make a note and move on they don't have the resources to be pulling kids over some untreated ants that aren't a danger okay yeah i mean like i said when i first read this i found that ridiculous but i guess you guys are right i guess you know 100 ants zero ants they kind of round but I, I will say this, you know, my dad's a psychologist. He does a lot with CPS. Like, obviously, I'm sure there's horrible, like, one-off cases where CPS fucks up. But generally speaking, they're not going to rip apart a family. That is, like, the mm-hmm. last thing they want to do. want to do. And she has a job. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I like mean, the idea, though, of being I, – I would love to see the CPS agent getting the call on this. And just like, yeah, hello, CPS. Uh-huh. How many ants? <laughs> At least a hundred. At least a hundred. What <laughs> kind of ants? Because that's the second question. Right, right. right. I mean, these are just the little like Sugar generic boys. ants. Yeah. Like generic. The, you know the Mario ants that are right, just like right. the standard choice for your ants. I don't. Mm. I don't think child protective service is going to get into their car for this one. We have another comment here. All I know is ants seem to be a constant problem for me, and I could never see the fact that I have an ant infestation be a reason my home wasn't safe to live in. Sometimes it just depends on where you live, and it's quite possible those ants got in her purse from her office. I guess it's possible. That's a I wild mean, spin. If you're that, just, I, mean, I brought them home. Scary. But I think that that was a good point about like, yeah, it does depend on where you it's live. It's true because if there's, I mean, we always had roaches. I lived in like a really nice building that had, a, it obviously had a roach infestation. Yeah. It's like, they're not coming from here. They're coming yeah. from somewhere mm-hmm. that's infested. So I actually but never I, saw a cockroach in my life until I moved into my uh, first apartment in uh, Sherman Oaks. And I grew up, I grew up in the same place, the Valley. We had a ton of ants. I never saw a cockroach. If they have a nest, into that they, they'll come. Mm. They'll send out waves. But so I, I basically think that know that she isn't the asshole for letting her boss know and her boss can then do with that information what they will. I mean, it's not a, it's not for her to like have on her conscience if the CPS is going to be called or not, because yeah. you're right. If you change it to lice, like, yeah, you do need to know where it's coming from so she can stop bringing them into the office i I love the defeatist attitude she has to of just like got ants don't know what to do about it yeah like she's not doing any moves we've covered a lot of it herself yeah i mean it's the thing is i think maybe she is i mean sometimes it's it sounds like this can be a pretty benign problem but it's like you are bringing creatures to work like and it is having effects i mean i didn't know this was a thing but an epi pen due to pesticides that's fucking serious you don't want to be firing off an epi pen you know this reminds me also of stinky foxy it's before your time but basically there is this woman who decided to have a, a pet fox Oh, yes. And no. You this yeah. One? Yeah. Yeah. And that pet foxes, they have a extremely dank skunk like mm. must. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, and it's like if it affects. And she was stinking coming to the office. Oh, boy. If it affects other people, it's like, well, it's affecting your workplace. It's like that's relevant to your boss. Like you're not being a narc. You're just saying like this is affecting me. And, and I, I hope the office would be reasonable and say, hey, we know you we know you have an ant problem. We have we've counted. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> maybe work from home until you get this. This one locked in or just yeah. be more careful an intervention you might say oh, it's pretty wild oh, wow. that they're getting Ejecting into her purse like keep your purse in your bedroom or where the ants have aren't. we considered this have we considered this is she working for the ants 
<laughs> oh, I thought you were going to go one eight hundred spiders dot com. No, 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 no. This, would be a perfect this is a rare. No, this is a rare situation oh, where one eight hundred spiders dot com is not going they to don't help. touch this. The spiders aren't going to be able to win against the ants. They're outnumbered uh, a million to one. That's true. This is actually the rival business of one eight hundred spiders dot com. This is ants are us weekly. <laughs> ants are us. It's a. It's like a. It's like a. What's those? A subscription box where right, every every right, every right. month you get a new on. box of ants. Thousands of ants. <laughs> It's gay for telling where the ants came from. I think we agree. And Honestly, well, I could go I no assholes here. Yeah, I think, I, no think assholes I think this here. person is like dealing with an ant problem and hasn't fully. I mean, I didn't know that. No, I don't think no. anybody knows that ants can lead to epipens. Like that's like a yeah. no, I wouldn't know thing, that. So. And it's also like a, an ant infestation is essentially the only real problem it creates is oh, I can't eat that food now. The ants got to it. Otherwise, there it's just like little yeah. dots in your th- house. Maybe I would say that. You know, she could be honest and just say like, hey, Susie, uh, just so you know, like I, I pesticides activate my thing and I have to I might have to use an EpiPen. Like, is there any way you can clamp down on the ants? It's a reporting that way situation. Don't have to get her in trouble, but it's, I think it's, it's fair either way. Honestly. I don't think you can really get somebody well, in trouble. For and it's that. already no. yeah. it's already to the higher ups. Like, it's not about that she was <laughs> they know. working. Like, the boss already knows. Yeah, that's about true. It. Boss is the one who counted she the ants. She was just the one saying like. Yeah, I know that it was from her part. Super valid. I would honestly, if I worked in this office, I think it's fucking hilarious. It would it, it would be so funny. humanizing to me to know that like <laughs> my office is fucking ants, ants, losers. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Here we go. AITA for deciding not to take my son to my in-laws. I 32F and my 33M husband have a three-year-old son. I told him I no longer care to have his family around our son. From the day we found out about the pregnancy, his mom has been unaccepting of it. I have been with the family for nine years and I've always tried to hang out with his mom and talk and get along. She never cared to, so I backed off. Anyways, she's always treated my son like he's not her grandson. She always makes a big deal about his sister's son, 4M. She sees his nephew and gushes about him and always makes sure he's fed and loved. Mine? She tells me to get his food and won't say hi or hug him or kiss him bye. She'll stop by our house and never attempt to see our son. I will try to tell stories of what our son does and she turns the convo around to be about nephew. It's been like that since he's been born. You get the idea. She recently tried telling me I withhold grandson from their family and I hold her son away from her. I told her straight up, it's it's not up to me for you to have a relationship with him. And I'm the one who tries to be a part of the family. I always try to get my husband to go over on my days off, which is Sundays. He refuses. She also tried to talk down on my mother because I take my son to see her. I said it's because my mom calls four times a week asking about him to see him. And she's a grandma of 10 and treats all the grandkids equally. Mother-in-law does not. I said, I'm tired of nine years of trying and three years of our son's life doesn't attempt anything with him. They go do fun things like the petting zoo, road trips, adventure parks, and she never asked for my son to come. But we did one thing without them and they lash out about how we don't invite them. I'm tired of how my son is being treated. My husband has multiple times stood up to them. He's also stated to not let it get to me because our son will realize who cares and will decide not to bother either. But I was wondering if I'm the asshole for not taking over our son anymore, if they're mistreating him. I'm heartbroken because I thought they would love him so much and they don't. Father-in-law absolutely loves their child and treats him good. Mother-in-law always gets mad. A-I-T-A. Wow. Really? I just figured one of you would have something to say about this one before well, me. Well, I have a personal antidote for this. Anecdote. Go ahead. Antidote. Or maybe it is an antidote. Maybe it's the Antidote's cure. Antidote's fun. <laughs> I like antidote. We got the cure. <laughs> Go ahead. So I think that there sometimes seems to be a theme in some people's lives where they tend to think that their daughter's kids are closer to them than their son's children are. Ooh, this is juicy. Mm. And a lot of times I feel like you're closer with your mother's side of the family than you are with your father's side of the family. This is akin to that stand up bit, Danny. I think we were talking about it recently. I think it's a Norm MacDonald bit, the bit about oh, how Mulaney, yeah. Oh, John Mulaney, yeah. Yes. Your father's father and your mother's mother. Those are the quote unquote more important yes. grandparents. Right. Yes, okay. kind of similar to that. And so Growing up in my my family, all of the sisters lived close by in New Jersey and okay. um, to the grandparents. And then my dad stayed by, too. So basically, there was three boys, three girls, and all the sisters were close by. Well, actually, one of them was away, but she would come all the time and then she ended up moving anyway. But my we were close by, too. 
But it honestly always felt like we were a little bit left out from the things that they would do together. All the cousins, the sisters would take their kids to do things together. And like my, me and my sister were kind of occasionally. You were left out by who? The, my dad's sisters and their kids. Your dad's sisters. Yeah. And maybe sometimes with the grandparents too. And they were just always so close with my grandparents. And so a lot of times we... Okay, wait, no, I think this does line up with what Jake said, because that means that your your dad's mother, right, would be the more distant person, and there's like a matriarchy thing kind of going on. That kind of mm-hmm. lines up, right? I guess the way I'm seeing it is like parents stereotypically tend to be a little bit more like you're giving your daughter away, mm. right? So there's more protectiveness over the daughter. Whereas the son's like, yeah, he, you know, I think the most good, re- please take care of him. We don't want him anymore. The, you know what I mean? The like most there's more that angle. way to say it is you look at the, the, children of your daughter as you are of the womb you are of the womb of my mm. blood yeah, and yeah, you yeah. look at the children of your son as you are from the balls yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Anyway, yeah. That's- like i remember one time it was my graduation from high school and it's like we only had a specific amount of tickets left and i guess somehow like my dad's parents were like no 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 well your your mom's parents should go because you know basically implying like we're closer with them or like that they are more related or more entitled to be there. And Mm. yes, granted we were closer with them because I lived with them for like a quarter of the year, but it was just interesting because it was like, well, you're just as much her grandparents as they are. So I just think that there's like this thing out there in Mm. this, this world that, you know, whether it's spoken or unspoken that, they think that their daughter's kids are more related to them or have more meaning in their yeah. life. Of the womb. I, I can understand there being yeah. some bias here. I mean, maybe if we dug deep into the... Here's another reason I don't like this. I'm I'm against grandparents using pickup techniques on children because this is negging. They're negging one of the yeah. grandkids. Yeah, they kind of are. So maybe they actually like this other one more and they're just trying to make them work for it. Right. <laughs> I, I, I think I think uh, maybe <laughs> I see some logic here just to give it a little bit of depth, which is, you know, the, the bond between a mother and a child is, I think, special. There's a reason like, yeah, you know, I read this book about the nature of love and like the, the brain hardware being used by like a mom holding her baby is like ancient. It's like reptilian mm, shit, yeah. whereas a guy holding their child, it's like brand new. It's hey, like, look at this thing I made. <laughs> yeah, it's like 200,000 years old. It has to do with a lot of like the social socialization of of humans like Mm. when we start to cooperate so it's like pretty new shit so there's something to me primal about that of course you know it doesn't it doesn't make any excuse so i but i think this is great i think this is a very astute observation shannon i'm kind of blown away by that Mm. um nonetheless i do think this is pretty straightforward it's like unequal treatment i mean how many times am i gonna sing the fucking song this is one of my hits baby Mm -hmm. like you can't treat kids unequally unfairly it's fucking abusive i maintain i maintain it it creates a lot of really fucked up feelings Mm -hmm. yeah equity equity not equality it it creates it creates a lot of really fucked up feelings growing up because kids pick up being the outside one very very quickly yes Mm -hmm. i don't feel like i was ever you know, not preferenced growing up, but mm-hmm. I, I picked up very quickly of, I was out of, out of my whole family. I was louder. I was more like into, you know, I was more into even from an early age, just like more into nerdy stuff. I, I, I don't know if anybody else out there grew up like this, but I was dubbed a computer kid, even though I wasn't really mm-hmm. into computers. I just liked things mm-hmm. to a really intense level as mm-hmm. opposed to just like, you know, I wasn't just playing with sports, well, you're an with sports ball. Yeah, I was an indoor kid. Yeah. <laughs> but so like the, the family phrasing of that is like, ah, he's the computer whiz. Right. I was like, I was never really a computer kid. whiz. I yeah. don't even like computers. So oh, I was never right. the outsider, but I knew that I wasn't like the rest of it's the shitty. family it's from an early. Sucks. And it, it, it did give, I wouldn't say it gave me complexes, but it did make me a little insecure about being the odd man out yeah, from a young of age. Yes. I, I think, you know, look, I think it's very human and understandable to have favoritist impulses. It's normal, but mm. you've got to control those and lock that shit in. Yeah, folks. and this is like taking it to the next level. Oh, is- like she is really treating this 
kid very unkind. Hates that baby. She's got it's, issues. Hates that I baby mean, so much. She, she loves. Yeah, him. she this must have an issue with her daughter-in-law too. I would say. This is interesting that I think Jake nailed this. The of the womb bias. Uh, and being of the balls. Yeah, of yeah. the balls. It just doesn't quite have the same ring to it. So, um, yeah, somebody else posted, you know, we're trying to get through some listener some issues here, but that, you know, somebody posted about the unequal parental treatment thing. And, you know, they were going through a lot of different like conditions that can happen, like, you know, job loss and all these things. And so. I'm not trying to say this as like, uh, you know, it's not an accounting thing. It's not like sit down to the spreadsheet and see, you know, which siblings got the most. Mm. It's about feelings. This is about yeah. emotional awareness. It's about creating an environment for your kids or your grandkids yeah. where they can have a conversation like, hey, I felt this was unfair. OK, let's talk mm. through why that felt unfair to you and how we can make up for that. Like, that's what it's about. Yeah. Um, and also, like, with that specific situation that someone had brought up, it was about, you know, that the parents were able to provide more for their younger siblings because they were more well off. Yeah. And it's like about, you know, if if they had the means but weren't giving them to you in the at that age. But then, you know what I'm saying? It's like they if they had the means and weren't helping right. you out. Right. But it's like they didn't have those at the time. Right. Exactly. So I can see that, yeah, it would be nice, like, if, you know, they might buy you a car now that you're an adult or something like that. But it's it, as long as you, like, felt loved by them. I think, I like I said, I think it's about facilitating an open dialogue and communication. True. I mean, if you legitimately feel cheated, which, like, you know, my brother got a car in high school and I never got a new, like a newer car. My own car. I always had the hand-me-down car. Mm. And it wasn't an issue. I didn't feel it. But then later now, I moved to L.A. And my parents helped me out with my car, you yeah. know, which, I mean, it's not really the same because I have a 2021 Camry That's Hybrid. True. That's <laughs> car you won. I mean, I won. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's a really vital thing. You know, it's don't behave with favoritism. That's really what we're talking about here, folks. AITA for deciding not to take my son to my in-laws. I think this one's a no-brainer. This just sounds like, honestly, it sounds like this person is acting in a super self-unaware and, and a frankly cruel way. I know. I would um, just, like, set up play dates with the father-in-law and and not invite the mother-in-law, and then maybe yeah, she'll get the fucking hand. Yeah. That's a good point to be conscious about that because you don't want to you don't want to break him out because yeah, that's cause almost the same bias, like too you know where you're biasing the woman and it's like look she fucking sucks but yeah. be inclusive toward the father in law tell him to come meet you at the park yeah yeah <laughs> it's yeah we agree uh it is not the asshole and she is oh yeah she's the big old asshole yeah yeah all right folks we're gonna wrap this thing up on a goofer here we're loving these listener submissions keep them coming on our subreddit reddit.com slash r slash a i t a pod join us on patreon patreon.com slash a i t a pod we got a discord over 170 bonus episodes call in show we got some of those coming around so can't wait to see you guys in there Mm -hmm. And hey, if you sent me enough, maybe I'll send you a mussy pic. <laughs> Here we go. AITA for sending a glitter bomb in revenge. My boyfriend and I were having relationship problems to a point we were struggling to even talk. I know that I shouldn't have done it, but I posted in a Facebook group about our relationship and asked for people's opinion. Well, we can't really criticize that. Now can we, gang? Yeah. <laughs> the post did not contain anything that my boyfriend was not aware of, but I was mad and was possibly a bit savage. I also forgot to post anonymously. Uh oh. <laughs> that one's on you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> My supposed best friend saw the post while she was on the phone to her sister and read the post out to her. I've known the sister for longer than my best friend, but we have never gotten along. And she is in a relationship with one of my boyfriend's friends. Ooh. She took it upon herself to join the group, screenshot it all, and then send it on to my boyfriend via her boyfriend in the lads group chat. Obviously, this oh. caused massive damage and made my life hell as my boyfriend and I lived together. In a moment of rage, I organized an anonymous glitter bomb to be sent to her house, which a few days decorated her kitchen. I'm definitely of the opinion that if you play silly games, that you will win silly prizes because what she did was unnecessary. AITA. Oh, Wait, I didn't know oh, you could do that. Oh, P. Hold on. Uh, yeah, oh. you can do this. You can do you this. You mean it's like a service? 
I mean, no, yeah. you can order. I don't know if it's a service, like it's like glitter bombs for you, but I, you can send glitter bombs to people and it's just a package just a, and you yeah. open it up it and it's like, surprise, glitter. this yeah. is your weekend now. With glitter. Um, yeah, ship your enemies glitter.com. Wow. Wow. Don't read We it, shouldn't though. plug like, that company. <laughs> you're not plugging that. For That's, that. We're, we're going to get a lot oh my of God, glitter those bombs, so guys. Yeah, don't, oh, no. please don't, don't send them to us, please. I'm, or you can send it to Danny. No, don't send it to any please, of us uh, please i already know all right i heard op they, sending me a funko pop is just as bad well, no, go yeah. ahead. ops or plastic litter bump op thank you so much for writing in thank you so much for uh trusting us with this information <laughs> you're the <laughs> one who played silly games and you got silly prizes here you posted unanimously and you, it sounds like you went savage it sounds like you were venting to online strangers about how upset you were about something and you X'd out the idea that that might come around on you. Yeah, but she wasn't expecting like, cause okay. So I was a part of this um, podcast Facebook group and it was very similar to different, different content, but women would write in and, and d uh, do AITA basically like asking for advice. Oh, really? And, um, I, I wrote in there a couple of times too, like anonymously. Anonymously. Actually, I think maybe one time I didn't, but I always would see like, oh, there isn't anyone in this Facebook group that I know. So like, there's no way of it really getting back to this person. But then her best friend being a dum dum read it out to her sister who she knows is in a relationship with her friend's boyfriend's bo friend. <laughs> So it's like such so messy and the best friend shouldn't have done that. I don't really think she was in that much of the wrong to like vent to a group that you trust that I'm, you. I'm not saying that she was wrong. No. I'm saying she she rolled them dice and she got snake eyes. Yeah. This was a botch. I'm sorry. You didn't post anonymously. It would be the same as if she put an identifying detail. You know, you, you gave it away. You botched it. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, but I don't think she's in the wrong for sending the glitter bomb. You're, I do oh, think Shannon. she's in the wrong. Oh, for a rare Danny and Jake for Shannon. Yeah. Oh, shit. This I never do happens. I'm sorry. OP, thank I you for writing in. I'm very much with Jake here, though. But, like, no. you, I think, are acting really unfair here. Well, fuck the friend that went and told her boyfriend. But she's still punching. She's, I, I can't get with you on You know this what she one, did, Shannon? Shannon? You know my rules. She, she reported. reported. A screenshot is a report. Why get in, into uh, the business? I'd, I'd actually like to weigh oh, in on no. this one. Oh, Garfield. Garfield. How, you How you doing? How you doing? How you For those doing, unacquainted, uh, this is uh, a Garfield He's our mascot. Rip -off. Well, <laughs> that's, mascot. that's very kind of you, but we haven't really gotten into contract negotiations on what my mascot fee is. <laughs> uh, it's two cans of beans weekly. Oh, and which I, kind? Uh, dealer's choice, no Pinto. Uh, <laughs> weird. What what Amazing. I think we have here, and Shannon, I understand what you're saying. You know, by by glitter painting the kitchen, she's really punishing both the sister and uh, and the uh, best friend. Right? Ooh, that's a good argument no, who, too. Who said that they live together? No, but still, there's an externality. You don't know if she has roommates or other people are negatively impacted by the glitter. Correct. Bomb. We that's don't know that. Argument. That's an assumption. She could just live by herself. Well, uh, it's uh, it's, so a, let's, it's a so probable let's it like assumption. A let's play it like a lie, Shan Shanathan. Uh, Daniel, I appreciate your your contribution there. She actually did that pretty well, though. I'm pretty. Impressed. She did, though. No, no, she nailed well. that. Oh. She nailed that for she sure, for sure. Uh, mm. What I think this really comes down to is you ordered a pizza and you said surprise me, and they hit you with a bunch of jalapenos, and you don't like jalapenos. It's your fault for saying surprise me. You posted on a Facebook group. You failed to make it anonymous for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. The person saw it. They reported it to someone else. She did nothing wrong. She did nothing wrong. She doesn't know. Oh, you anonymity. It was your duty to protect your own information. You botched it. That got reported. You don't you don't get a you don't get a striker for that. You know she's not your friend, but you don't get an exact vengeance on her. I, to me, this is an unambiguous. Shanathan, when you get in the dodgeball Shana. game of gossip, sometimes you get hit with the ball right back. And that's what was happening here. She wanted to play gossip ball and she got caught square in the noggin. Yeah, you're right. I don't hear you're OP right, taking Garth any Uncles. responsibility either. This caused massive damage at home and made my life a living hell. 
I think that you, OP, need to take a little bit of ownership. You were yeah. part of this chain of events. Yeah, she needs to take a little bit of ownership here. I mean, you know, your first mistake was not posting anonymously and like keeping the details kind of vague. Um, but I still think that the sister is messed up for going because she said that she, they have issues with each other for some reason. So she, the sister knew what she was doing when she went to the boyfriend to like try and get the, her in well, trouble. Who is the sister? It's her best friend's sister. It's the who best. she's known for a while, but they have beef. And I, I want to piggyback off. So it's off not like even Garth. a betrayal. I could ding on a betrayal because if someone you trust goes and rats you out and reports, but still mm. rats you out. Cause I'm saying like, like I tell you a secret chain and I'm like, don't tell that to anyone. And you tell that then. Yeah. I would say that's a betrayal. You're being an asshole, mm. but it sounds wanna, like she knew the sister wasn't, they weren't yeah. friends. There's yeah, no betrayal. She I want to piggyback see that off. The sis, she, her best friend is messed up. I think they all suck. But well, I'm, I would like to pick, piggyback off what Garfunkel was saying. This is gossip and gossip got no rules. The second you made it, you made an unanonymous post on a gossip Facebook group. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. You're turning it into gossip and people love to gossip. I don't oh, think that I, we wouldn't have a podcast if they didn't. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that honestly, like, I don't think the best friend did that much of a betrayal because you made it gossip. You made it public. Wait, hold no on. I'm knowledge. getting lost in the mechanics. Mm. My supposed best friend saw the post while she was on the phone to her sister. But then the sister is the one with the grudge. Yes. Mm. The best friend okay. should have known not I, to say anything in I front think of her sister. I might be able to throw a ding there. I might be able to help mm, you out there, I'm, Shannon. Yes. I'm the not best with you guys on that. I'm not Jake. What? It's gossip. Imagine you you got no. down into the mud and now the pigs are wallowing in it with you. The thing is, I could see the best friend basically. So I'm imagining this one. You ever do you ever put someone on speaker while you're browsing on your phone, you know, because you yeah. don't really care about them. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like half listening and she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My best friend just posted on the Facebook group and she just kind of went into it without realizing what she was doing. Yeah, I don't think it was malicious. I think it was. Yeah, just, it's no, good. I think I he's know. got us, Shannon. I don't, I don't think, think we so. can say it's inherently malicious. I can see her doing it as a slip up. If you I make an so. unanonymous, if you make something that's not anonymous on a gossip website, you're basically saying uh, you want this to get around to me. I, I don't think that if you made it anonymously, then there's an obvious then you're and your friend can see through that and then she shares it to a known enemy of yours which is just funny uh then she shares the anonymous information then she knows it's you that's a betrayal when it's unanonymous you're just putting it out to the world i think i no. can ding best friend on being sloppy i think sloppy this I'll, I'll sloppy give you sloppy. at best at best we yeah. could go harder there could have been malice here I mean, they're, they're purportedly your best friend. So well, I, I think slop is fair. Nonetheless, OP, we appreciate the submission, but AIT for sending a glitter bomb and a revenge. I'm sorry, but I'm very much YTA I here. Got, I got to go YTA here. Um, but you know what? You know what? This is a learning lesson. Put the microphone up to your mouth. I don't understand how you it's don't. A, it's a stuffed animal, Jake. No, no I am the one who's <laughs> talking. I use Jake as a sorry, puppet. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I'm the real Jake. <laughs> No, but honestly, they all, they all suck. And I don't think the glitter bomb, whatever, girl, like you, you do you, honey. <laughs> all right. Shanathan going full chaos on this one. Shannon's keeping her simp army alive. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it's really that big of a deal to be on. And I'm saying OP, I'm, what I'm, what I mean is I don't think that this is as, tremendous to your life as it feels right now. I think this will be something that you laugh about in a little while. I don't know when that's going to be. Um, I hope you and your partner get things on the right track. If it is somebody that you want to be in the long haul with. Um, but just, just in future, when you take an L like this, it's best to take the lesson and move on. When you, you're starting a war, you're starting something that's like this could what just What are we looking at with the glitter bomb? It's not really clear to me. Like you break it down. You just open up for a me. package no, I understand and then that. It's, there's glitter all I understand over the that. place. It's my, hard to clean up. That's my question. How long are we talking? What is just shiny? There, you probably would have glitter in your apartment like just 
probably for it like gets another everywhere. year. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's everywhere. Not, if it projectiles not like, yeah. and like launches up to the ceiling and shit, that's You'll, a like, that's you probably a bridge are too still far. Fla- find, launch up to your ceiling. No. But, but I think you would still find some glitter like within it, probably a year later. Yeah, you're getting a, rid of most of it in what, five minutes of that? Yeah. And if you don't drop it or anything. No, I assume, assume it was a clean explosion. No, no, no. There's no explosion. Uh, oh, there's no explosion? There's no, there's no, <laughs> no. pop. I don't that, no, oh, I don't. Is there I, a pop? I, I, that's the part where I'm like, I, if this is glitter for your enemies, I would assume that there's some kind of delivery system on the glitter. Oh, I just thought it's like when you opened it and then it's just oh, like, God. shit, this is like everywhere. Like you take a letter out and then the glitter's on the letter. You, like, I don't you know, know what? Okay. Oh, there is a spring-loaded, there's a spring-loaded contraption in it. Oh, there's a spring-loaded contraption oh, that's that launches though. it. You know what, gang? I feel bad. I feel like I kind of, I might have Oppenheimered this one. This is 1-800-spiders.com, but with glitter. Oh yeah! Somebody actually took I mean, my okay, advice wait, on this. This so might be my bad. I get fully glitter bombs. I'm looking at what twenty minutes of vacuuming that bad no, boy. It's, it's still around. It does not glitter. Doesn't get vacuumed up. It doesn't get Windexed off. It doesn't get Lysol wiped. It just clings to surfaces. If like if we got glitter on those like hard, I don't know what to call those surfaces we have in our oh, kitchen, but that material, God. that glitter is going to be there for a while. And Jackie probably knows how to clean it up. I would just make it worse. I don't think this is okay. I think this is. It's a bridge too far, gang. It's. It is domestic terrorism, literally. Yeah, because I mean, technically, she was the one that like fucked up. Spring loaded glitter bomb. That's it's right in the title. Yeah. Awful. Uh, this is wor- way worse than getting an I heart to fart shirt. Yeah, that's funny and lighthearted. That's no problem. <laughs> yeah. And who in. did it? Who did it? <laughs> We're trying to bring you in. Are you at ESH? You can do that. I could do ESH because I, I think they I can, suck too. I can do an ESH, but I Jake. I, no, no, I'm with. Come on, let's just agree. I'm tired. I, the only, the only well, reason we're wrapping up. The but only I'm not reason I'm ESH. okay with an ESH is because I think anybody who engages in this kind of gossip is making a mistake. But I'm, I am gonna still stick to. I'm gonna still stick to a soft YTA because okay, this I'll, is I'll a, this is that. a, okay. this is a learning lesson for you. I don't think that this was as malicious as you meant it to be, but I hope that you pick up from this one of just like, don't talk shit if you don't want shit talked back. If your best friend acted with malice, I could give yeah. her an ESH. Otherwise, uh, this to me is just a clean YTA. Love you, OP. Thanks for listening. All right, guys, that's the app. Thanks so much. We love you, and we'll see you next time. I love was you told all. I would get to talk about crypto this episode. Oh, no. Cut the mic. Garfield. Where are my beans? Oh, God. Got it. Got it. <laughs>